long as you get a bone tomahawk in there, I'm into it. Do right. it. Kick it He's off, recording. Steve. Is it yeah, recording now? Yeah. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome to Bone Tomahawk, the podcast sponsored by I Like the Movie Movie with Dan and Garrett. I'm your host, Dan and Garrett. <laughs> you nailed it. Thank you. Perfect. Killed can it. You, well, can, you you inter- one. can you introduce our guest? And someone I never met. Her name is Tori. Mm-hmm. Tori, yeah, she's that's, too. That's true. All your favorites, me, Dan, and Garrett. We've got Dan, we've got Garrett, and we've got Tori. Correct. <laughs> yeah. That was a well, hot intro, show. man. Thank you. So let's talk yeah, about so... let's talk oh, about no. which you're, you're not done. You got to plug the show now. You got to tell everybody oh. where they can find us. You can find the show. Um, well, I mean, if you listen, you already found the show. <laughs> well, you found the video component of the right. show, but we're we're uh, right. expanding. We're diversifying. They know where to find us um, on YouTube, but where else do they find us? Uh, the other things, you know, your usuals, the iTunesies, the the Spotify's, the Stitchers, the Stitcher fixes. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we're actually not on Spotify, but the rest of them we're on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know we got to get on it. You know what we need? No, we need. I think we need Joe a fresh on Spotify. I know. I think we need a fresh logo uh, in order to make that happen. Oh, I yeah, put you on the spot. I think. I got you. All right. Well, then I'm going to finish um, right. this intro. Why don't you guys do a real intro? So all, so the different, all the different podcatchers. This is I like to movie movie. One of our guests this week, Steve Richards, did a little guest introduction for you. Also with us, we have Tori Potenza of the Butter with That podcast, and of course, my name is Dan Scully, and my name is Garrett Smith. And you're all flute benders. So we've got yes. everything in there. <laughs> yep, <laughs> got it all. Nailed yep. it. Bon all I'm gonna do a little beard comb. Perfect. Bring everybody in. Perfect. <laughs> Gather Perfect. Around. Perfect. Uh, we do a so slight, yeah, we're subtle hat adjust. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Should we start with guests, Dan? We're because we're just gonna, you know, I don't. Well, what the hell? We don't. We don't need a format here. That's the whole point of this show. We can just well, relax. You know what? Since we already talked about it a lot, and I mentioned it a little bit on a on a side project, yes, I'll sir? just tell you, Garrett, that I revisited Speed Racer. Yeah, that's a perfect film. It yes. is perfect. Yes. Because, and I say that because you know whether you like it or not, that is up to you yes. but uh when it comes down to will there ever be a better speed racer movie uh the answer is that's not possible no yeah, no be. way no way and so i did that as a stepping stone to watch uh speed vapor aka racer wave yes, and sir. that is the finest adult film ever produced yes it's been so long since i've watched a non-pornographic food f- uh, bleh, food wow where's my head a non-pornographic film and was like, shit, this is actually making me physically horny. So <laughs> yeah. credit to the makers of Speed Vapor. Uh, I was definitely like turned the fuck on by that whole movie. And, and yeah. like, I mean that literally. It's, it yeah. is... Wait, do you agree with that? What? Were you turned on by Speed Vapor? Because we watched that together. Um, I don't know if I was turned on by Speed Vapor. <laughs> I don't think I was. I was a little turned on by Shirley, which we'll talk oh, about. Okay. Sure, sure. <laughs> oh, fair enough. I want to watch that as well. One of my favorite things about Speed Vapor is where they like a lot of the relationships, they just sort of like, they sort of repeat close ups over and over Mm. again. And Mm. they let like, they kind of like let their relationships really kind of like become like really deep over the course of that. Mm. You get that scene where they finally kiss and it literally feels like sex. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I think that's kind of what I mean about it is that I like Vaporwave because it like, kind of uh this is gonna sound so ridiculous but for a short while i was like real into just listening to dubstep as i rode my bike Uh because it reminded me of jazz and that i couldn't really tell where it was going but it always found resolution and i really enjoyed that except it sounds like a game boy so it's even better Uh but like vaporwave just like it it makes that uh just has like that slow pulsating feel it's and so good. it's one of those where it hits like i can feel the bass and it it just hits me in a tactile way so when i say the movie made me horny i'm being a little uh, but oh, it didn't matter it just it was one of those I where the oh. whole, i felt enveloped by all senses blood machines did it a little bit too i was listening okay. to the the score from that which was like super yeah, good really yeah. Mm-hmm. That score. yeah yeah it was, I was great like mixed on blood machines to watch but yeah. i really I, I, I dug the ambition i think it looked pretty cool yeah. but i went and listened to the score so good so many times as a result yeah. because that's like fantastic yeah I, carpenter that... brute yeah, mm-hmm. the first episode of that was was kind of weak sauce. I thought I was like, ah, mm-hmm. this is like you know. But the second, third episode were just straight up like just visuals and music, yeah. and like the story didn't really matter anymore. And I I really enjoyed it ultimately, just as like kind of a tactile you know, visceral experience. 
I think that it uh it probably I, I actually might like it better if I watch it again now in the wake of uh, Spader Vape or uh, Spader Vape. Spader Vape. I can, I can never think of which is the mix. So I'm just making it all mixing it all. Uh, vapor Speed. Uh-huh. Vapor. Uh, no, Vapor Wave is the genre. Yes. Uh, yep. Speed wave. wave. Speed Vapor. Yes. Got it. Razor Trash. So yeah, yeah, that was the best thing I've watched recently. And it's oh my god, Speed Racer is so good. That. It was. I like have been thinking about it all week. Actually, I would like to rewatch it soon. It's so good. Can I ask you a question, though, about your yeah. uh, bold statement about there never being a better speed racer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I like to say never say never, especially with all the advancements in technology that we've seen in the last even 50 years. What if in the next 50 years there's a new version of speed racer where you get to be speed racer? I mean, I do play a lot of Mario Kart, so like I'm picking up what you're putting down. He's uh, already doing interactive movies at Netflix. Yeah, that's true. He is. That's he's true. a. He's a pretty appealing character to get to be. I think as well, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. he, you know, he's like he's kind of like a, a savior character. You know, he's like he's like a perfect dude that's just really good at racing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the one thing very... I was super like surprised about was in the movie when he didn't take the deal with the guy who was offering him the deal. Because in my head, I was like, oh, this is gonna be one of those movies where he takes the deal then has to fix it because it's bad. But yeah. no, the problem is he's just too fucking good. Yeah, he's yeah. too good. Yeah, he didn't take the everlasting gobstopper. <laughs> he didn't do it. <laughs> and that scene is so good too. I love the guy that plays. What's his name? Like Royalton, I think. Right, Royalton. Yeah, Royalton, Royalton. Yeah, Industries. Royalton. Or, yeah. Yeah, I love. I love that scene. The way that guy reacts to him denying it. He he like starts laughing and he's like, "You naive child." He's a, it's so uh, good. He's a guy. What the hell is his name? I liked um, Racer X in that movie because I love Matthew Fox and everything. Dude. Mm. He is so good in that movie, I think. Like I've never seen him do that. The one guy goes to punch him, and Racer X just like catches the punch in his hand. But it's like when he catches it, it's a real punch that pushes back. Yeah. And I was like, this I'm watching an anime, but there's flesh on screen. I don't get it. Yeah. And he he like he's the only actor I've ever seen like actually become an anime character. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He like there's something about the way he talks to speed. Where he's like, he's yeah. just nailing like what an American dub of an anime sounds like, <laughs> yeah. but like as but a human a being. Compelling, yeah. Yes, he's like not a cartoon character. You know what I mean? It's like it's wild. It's so good. Love that movie. So well, who's up next? Someone tell me something I haven't talked to death this week. Steve, what do we watch? watch? Good. I actually, I've been keeping a list of quarantine films. Okay. That I've watched. Hey, um. Cool. Don't bring up anything we talked about on Hot Property. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so It Man 4 is out. Um, <laughs> Literally the first thing we talked about on Hot Property. <laughs> God, it's so bad. What a bad, bad movie. Um, why don't we let Tori go first so I can get my thoughts together about what I want to talk about. Certainly. Um, what should we talk about? Should we talk go? about Shirley if you want. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I was going to ask about that if you didn't talk about it. Cause yeah, I'm so sure. excited for this movie. Yeah. Um, I was excited about it too because I think a couple weeks ago we I saw like Movie John posting about it and I was yeah. like oh shit I didn't know Elizabeth Moss was playing Shirley that's like amazing yeah, so Shirley Jackson yeah Shirley Jackson um, yeah so you know it's kind of a biopic about her but it's based on a novel uh, that was written in like 2014 um, so it's weird because it's like an interpretation of a real person but like another interpretation of that mm-hmm. um. But yeah, it's about, you know, Shirley Jackson and her husband, Stanley, who is a a literary critic and a professor who is very obviously like cheating on her with all of her, like all of his like hot students uh, that he, you know, is teaching. Um, Not not Stan Lee of Marvel creation. His name is Stanley. No, 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 Stanley. Yeah. Actually, his full name is Dr. Stanley Hyman, I believe. Well, I, I don't think it's actually Hyman. But I think it is. I, <laughs> I don't know. It's Stanley Hyman. I should know. I, I feel like if my last name it. was Hyman, I would work very hard to make my catchphrase. Give me a break. <laughs> just, to, just to do that to people. God damn it, Dan. <laughs> I'd work so hard. <laughs> it would be my life Stanley, Stanley Edgar gets... Hyman. Oh, it was. Okay. It. All right. Nailed it. That just seemed like too on the nose. I know. You know? Yeah, once you see the movie, too, it's like it's all about like... Like the sex these people are and aren't having, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I kind of. She went to Syracuse it. University. What's, like the, what's the tone of it? I, I, I mean, they. 
the director does a great job of making it feel like a Shirley Jackson novel. Yeah. Um, yes. It's which, Josephine Decker directed. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Which I've never okay. seen anything else that she's done. Um, but it sounds like she's directed some other interesting things. So I'd like to see some of her other work. She um, did Butter on the Latch and Thou Wast Mild and Lovely. Two very short but extremely strong indie films. Oh, cool. Big fan. And I think they might both be on either Shutter or Canopy. Oh, Highly that's recommend. dope. Sweet. And she did Madeline's Madeline as well, correct? Oh, oh yes. That looks super interesting. That, yeah. yeah. Madeline's Madeline is real cool. Yeah. Real cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, somehow through tone and the like just weird musical score, they really make it feel like it's actually a horror movie that you're watching, even though it's kind of just about a horror writer and, uh, you know, these young people that are living in their house at the moment, which ends up having horrors in its own about, you know, like being a kept woman uh, and being like forced to be a homemaker when they want to be doing other things and dealing with their, yeah, she's you know, got stories to tell. Yeah, she's got stories to tell. And she's like fighting a lot of mental health issues at mm-hmm. the same time. So it's like pretty interesting. Um, but How's, Elizabeth uh, Moss, Moss, she's amazing. She's um, as always. Yeah. And uh, the guy who plays her husband, I always forget his name. Oh, God. Why can I never remember his name when he needed it? Oh, Michael Stuhlberg. Yeah. Um, oh, he's the dude, best. Dude, I didn't even like, recognize he's him. He's, she, yes. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they are incredible in this movie. So together. good. Yeah. Their chemistry is unreal. And they're rela- I, the, th- the reason you should watch this movie is, I think, their relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, they, yeah. ultimately, I, the movie is like only kind of about their relationship. Yeah. Um, but like they are so good in it together and their relationship is so fucking weird. It's like it, you vacillate constantly between like being angry with one or both of them for the way they are handling their interactions mm-hmm. with each other and other people. And then realizing that like they are the only ones for each Like it would be impossible for them to actually be with anybody else. It's like, they're so codependent in a strange way. It's it, yeah. it's fascinating. It's like one of the most fascinating relationships I've ever seen in a movie. It's so This is on Hulu, right? Yeah, today. So yeah. Hulu, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna watch this this weekend. Good. I'm in. I Josephine Decker's in my don't skip, just oh, don't cool. skip her movies when they come out category. Dude, oh, awesome. it's really well directed too. The sound design is like really incredible, so and then it has this like very in my letterbox review I called it like idiosyncratic editing. It, it's like it's edited in a pretty interesting way um, where there were a couple times where I was like, huh, like, it, I don't know. There were just choices that I thought were not bizarre, but just they felt unfamiliar. They felt like choices mm-hmm. I'd not necessarily seen other people make. Um, and, and, and they're pretty interesting. It was mm-hmm. it was cool. Yeah. If you watch Madeline's Madeline, there's like it's trying to bridge the gap between the actual interactivity of theater, like performance art mm-hmm. and film. Yeah, And while at the same time trying to like bridge the gap between, you know, stark choices that that force you to feel a certain way and like instead like fluidly trying to coax you into involuntarily feeling a certain Mm -hmm. way. It's really weird to describe. And you see it develop over uh, over her film her filmography. And uh, especially I think it's in Butter on the Latch. There's like a nightmare sequence that's very simple and basic, but it's haunting. Oh, cool. And um, so, yeah, I'm very curious to see how that has developed even further in a, you know, in a, in a I think her first adaptation, because I'm pretty sure oh, all her cool. previous films were originals. Mm. I can't wait to see it. I'm so pumped. And I, it's I good. It's, it's really worth watching. Got me like double pumped. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Tori has a review of it up at uh, cinema76.com. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you're watching this, uh, it's, you know, you can watch it on Hulu this weekend. You can read Tori's review mm-hmm. on Cinema 76, which is very good. Um Thanks. If I do so myself. Mm. Um, oh, and yeah. also I'll go back and say Speed Racer is on Prime. Oh, yes. Dope. Hell That's yeah. all. Nice. Sure you can find that. If, uh, it's if, so... You have to watch it with commercials, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's why we yeah. own it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, I have it on Blu-ray so that we can watch it whenever. We watch it at least like three times yeah. just as like comfort food. Oh, I think Invisible it's Man came in the mail today, too. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Well, we got to catch Wait. up on that because I know we're going to do an episode soon on that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, definitely one good. You said in the mail. Yeah. Yeah. Are you one of for the three people that are still using Netflix's mail order service? No, we we actually bought a movie. No, we like we like we to a, own physical we media. A physical copy of yeah. a movie. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's weird to me. Yeah. yeah, we buy movies. How do you? Do I'm you, all digital all the time. 
Yeah, do you buy any movies, like even digitally, or do you just like stream yeah. whatever's available? Yeah, I bought um, fucking. Uh, <laughs> well, there's streamers and there's buyers. Some yeah. things you got to stream because it's like good, but I'm not going to watch it again. But like, I do a lot of buy bets. because I'm going to watch it a hundred times because it's yeah. the thing. Like, Invisible Man, I'm going to buy because that movie rips. Amazing. It's awesome. You know, yeah. Back to the Future, I'm going to buy. But yeah. like, you know, if I'm like, oh, I'm going to rent Domestic Disturbance with uh-huh. Vince Vaughn and John Travolta, I'm not going to buy that. <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah. I'm just gonna rent domestic disturbance or stream it if it's available. Yeah, I'm gonna Actually, rent I'm probably just gonna skip it entirely. I was yeah. gonna say I'm gonna rent myself. domestic disturbance so that I can forget to watch domestic disturbance. <laughs> oh, Travolta versus Vaughn? Yeah, I, I think I saw that movie in theaters. I'm, I'm pretty sure. sure you did. I think we sure. all did. I I'm also it's mandatory. <laughs> I think I also saw the glass house, and the thing is I'm not sure if I actually saw both or if I don't know which one is which. <laughs> That's so funny. When the Glass House came out, I was dating a girl that looked somewhat similar to Lily Sobieski, and that's why I didn't see that movie. I was like, "Well, oh, that looks pretty good," and she was like, "I will not see her movies. I am sick of her." <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> that's funny. I get it. Uh, Steve, uh, what have you seen? Yeah, yeah. Give us a movie, Steve. Well, how much in your in your movie movie podcast have you talked about Fast and Furious? Oh, listen, I we mean, could always talk about the Fast and the Furious. There's always room for yeah, there's, no, there's no top to that. You know what I mean? Like, we've, we've been looking for that ceiling, and we just, I mean, it is, we've got, we got room. Space. We got room. My dad watched all of them in, like, a week. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> yeah? Be- well, because here's what had happened. Yeah. So I was scrolling through an endless... Um, Tideless pool of Facebook videos, and occasionally, like <laughs> a movie, a movie clip will come up. Yeah, and it was the scene where um, Dom. It's on. They're on the bridge with the tank. They anchor yeah. the tank with um, Tyrese's car. Uh-huh. And just a heads up to the audience: I'm going to go back and forth with naming the actual characters and the actors that play them. <laughs> yeah. Just that's just how that's just how you work with Fast and Furious. So, That's the scene where the most iconic piece of Fast yeah. and Furious imagery yeah. comes from, which is Tyrese flying through the sky yeah. between cars, being, um, and likely saying, oh, hell no, as, yeah. as he yeah. flies. Well, I would say that the most iconic scene is Dom flying through the yes, over the bridge, catching Letty, played by Michelle Rodriguez, I wrote and on, landing on another car. I wrote an article on Cinema 76 that is basically just about that scene and how that scene is the Fast and the Furious movies. It's Yeah. At it's everything the high point of the series, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Funny enough, that's the scene that was like, you know what? I got to fucking... Because at this point, I'd only seen um, one, two, and three, like, ages ago. And then yep. I had to use my movie pass to justify paying for it one month. And so I went to see Fate <laughs> of the Furious. Yes. All right. And, I mean, I figured I didn't have to see the other ones. I, I do. Didn't have to. It was I also watched the series way out of order when I first saw it. Yeah, the and series I was like, is oh, out this of movie order. fucking sucks. <laughs> yes, yes. I can't believe it's I. I think God this was kind of free because I hate paying for it. Yeah, and so then I, it turned me off for a long time. Dan won't stop fucking talking about that. Fast and Furious, <laughs> family, Dom, Letty. I love these. Are my fa- I got I know friends. I have family. I get it, Dan. Fast and Furious is cool. Then I saw this clip. But I was like swimming the rug. Then I saw this clip and I'm like, fuck, man, I gotta watch this quarantine. I gotta watch this fucking movie, man. <laughs> Luckily, Amazon had a sale where they were all on sale to rent for like two bucks. Hell yeah. And Fast, Fast Five was on HBO. So I'm like, all right, for six bucks, I'm getting four movies. This is this is perfect. Yeah. And so and I really started with like Fast... 10 movies because you're gonna keep yeah. watching them. Yeah. So I texted and Dan. I'm like, back right. to Papa Dan. <laughs> and I, 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 to be I pretty much live tweeted Dan. I pretty much live tweeted to Dan my experience as I was doing it. So I started Fast and Furious, which is the fourth installment, uh, at about like 3.30 in the afternoon while I was finishing up work. And I didn't get any work done. I was glued to the screen the entire time. <laughs> and like, then, that's so funny. So then that movie ended, and I'm like, you know what? I got to see what happens. So I booted up Fast <laughs> Five. And then I like how you're compelled by the plot. Like, well, what's what's next for Toretto and the boys? I gotta <laughs> see what happens. These crazy characters, man. It's really so a soap opera in that way, right? Like every <laughs> entry, you're really like, is. I gotta know what's next. 
And then Fast Five comes out. I'm like, oh shit, Gal Gadot's in this? Fuck yeah. And then um, fucking Paul Walker. I like how it wasn't, like, oh bus. shit, The Rock's in this. Like the entire universe went, oh shit, The Rock's in five. You're like, I knew, the, I mean, I knew the Rock was in it because I saw Fast Day of the Furious. He takes a torpedo and puts it toward the submarine. It's great. Um, he has muscles, yeah. <laughs> but then Fast Five is like, all right, Paul Walker running up the bus. Letty fucking somehow knows he's there and at the right moment swerves and catches him on her spoiler. No way is that possible. But I still stood up and clapped. Um, and then at the end of that movie, I was like, fuck, man. Gotta see what happens next. That's <laughs> <laughs> six. And at this yeah, point, it's like, back, all bets are off. Yeah. At this point, it's probably like fucking 9.30 at night. And booting yeah, up Fast all Six. two and a half hours long. Yeah, know, they're, they're long. Yeah, <laughs> I'm watching Fast Six. And I'm like, holy shit, this can't get any crazier, man. Now Statham's here, or no, that was that wasn't Statham. That was Luke Evans. Yeah, Luke yeah. Evans is Statham awesome. Statham was the series. post credits yeah. when he did the uh, you know, don't yeah. Oh, hey, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Yeah, oh, I was like, fuck, man. Luke Evans is here. Gaston, my boy. <laughs> I dare I- reference the live action Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> not on my show. What? Why All not? Right. M- Mrs. Potts's spout. Should be her nose. That's it. If she's very creepy. Spell, it's she's not, very it's creepy. Not her nose and everything yeah. else can kick rocks because <laughs> the, it, if her spout is not her nose, that that's like Trump's hair. It lets me know that you're not listening to reason. But Dan it's, Stevens it's a, is in it. Dan Stevens is in a lot of movies that I have not cared for, despite <laughs> the fact that he's one of my husbands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Call of the Wild. He's, that movie was garbage. He's that was in that straight movie? garbage. I'm still not going to see it. So don't ever waste your time. The man <laughs> who invented Christmas. Yeah, oh my God, see that go either. to bed. It is yeah. awful. Yeah. But like, he's also the guest, which is on Netflix as of today. I so, heard that. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. If you're watching this right now, watch the guest. Watch the guest. That's just my advice all the time. Yeah. But Mrs. Potts's spout should be her nose. You're right. Full stop. I will not support anything that says otherwise. You're I regret right. bringing up guest on. <laughs> Mrs. Potts's spout should be her nose would be a great punk band name. <laughs> that being said, that being said, Luke Evans playing Gaston was a perfect casting in my opinion. Oh yeah, honestly, I thought Beauty and the Beast looked like it was going to be good, and I'm open to seeing it if they can Sonic the Hedgehog that spout back to her face. <laughs> <laughs> you also have an undying crush on Emma Watson, so you would see anything what? she's in. Yeah, man. Do I? Oh yeah, that's news to me, man. I mean, I I think she's beautiful and she seems cool yeah. as hell. But uh, I just you probably you probably her. forgot about it. Um, anyway, uh, so I could have. I'm, <laughs> I'm watching Luke Evans try to break up my family. Yeah, and that and I'm watching the finale. Well, he which played takes, Gaston. <laughs> I'm watching the finale, which takes place on the longest runway ever known to man. Um, oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, my girl Gal gets <laughs> fucking got from the. I uh, just left on the runway, Magic. and I'm wondering. So then, in Fast Seven, Luke Evans is. We'll get to the hospital scene in a minute, but Luke Evans is in a hospital bed. Yeah. And I'm wondering, like, okay, did anybody go back and check to see if Gal Gadot's character was okay, or did they just like drive off, like, ah, fuck it, man, it's over, we won. Listen, <laughs> they they did the perfect comic book thing, which they always need to do and always will do, which is they left that thread open, man. Gal Gadot can know, come if back she comes at any back, time. If she comes back, and we know Han's going to be in Fast 9, yeah. if, if she comes back in Fast 9, the first thing I would ask if I was her, I would look at Han, who is the love interest, and say, hey, guy, remember me? Didn't want to come back, did you? Well, you fucked up, because now it's over. <laughs> he was just <laughs> like, oh, I got to go to Tokyo now. <laughs> Didn't want to maybe <laughs> check a pulse. How about that? Maybe see, you know, check to see if there's a fucking body. Wait, so um, I think you're so that, something <laughs> What if what if Fast Nine turns out to just be like yet another prequel that they just sandwiched yeah, yeah, in yeah. somewhere? I would be so dies. mad. Yeah, yeah. I'd, be so mad. <laughs> I'd be very mad, but I'd also I'd be, be so mad, mad, and I just got here. I'd, I'd be so mad. Wait, I know. actually, it kind of makes sense because right, like maybe what they need to do now is establish that like yeah, no, the family has been doing missions with Brian, without Brian. Like yeah. they spent their whole timeline mixing and matching, you know. So they gotta like they gotta set one a little bit earlier where Brian's just not in it because he's whatever somewhere else you know yeah he's just he's doing something yeah that's for you so then, at the end of i seven, think they should be like gal gadot how or what was her name uh, uh giselle, giselle how are giselle. you still alive and they do a flashback of her getting thrown into the darkness yeah. and then it's just a horrible cgi of her just be like 
hits the ground running and it just like goes to the mall or something. Like, oh shit, she made it. So uh, then Fast yeah. seven, Fast Six ends, and we see the post credit of none other than my favorite Brit, Jason, my second favorite actually, Michael Caine forever. My second favorite Brit, um, Jason Statham, uh, blowing up my friend Han from Tokyo Drift. And I was like, no, man, Statham, that's not cool. And at this point, it's 11 o'clock, and I, I look at myself in the mirror, and I say, <laughs> gotta see what happens. <laughs> so then I booted up Fast 7. And, like, you know, like, when you, it's like, started It's physically movie impossible to turn Fast 7 off. Yeah. yeah. It's not possible. Well, no I, one has ever done it. You know, like, when you, when you start to watch a movie that you're really excited about, and, like, maybe half an hour in, hour in, you, like, start to get the, the droopy eyes and the head forwards. Yeah. And then you're like, you know what? I respect this movie too much to fall asleep during it. I'm going to make the responsible choice and turn it off and save it for tomorrow. Uh-huh. Mm. That's what I did. But I didn't start it over so I could watch that hospital scene again, which Dan brought me. Dan, you want to go give me your hospital spiel? Because you put it really well. I, I feel like I don't know what point you're, you're pointing me towards. I mean, it's weird that Jason Statham destroys an entire hospital and then demands to oh, yeah. care for the survivors. <laughs> <laughs> that seems really weird. And it's also it. really but also, that like he's supposed about... to be family now because he's the kind of guy who just fucking rage kills. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the. It is. What... But, but at the same Dan, time, I think like, Dan said to me, "How can he be part of the family now when he murdered an entire hospital and like didn't not only didn't bat an eye but looked like he was having just like the best time of his life?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like what he's here to do. Yeah. They haven't. Said... I, and I, I will, I give the series enough respect that they will come up with a way that is satisfactory. Um, they will retcon it in a way that is satisfactory. It was My a racist hospital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It would be done. That's all it takes. But I feel like they're going to they're gonna try and retroactively explain why he's actually good. And I think that they'll pull it off. My concern is that I fear they might have already thought they made that point, and I just don't think it's well enough made yet. Yeah. And Hobson Shaw was kind of a piece of shit, so, like, yeah. if that was great, I'd be like, whatever, I'm over it entirely. There's but like, that movie just didn't do it for me. There's a scene in 8 where they, like, toss off that thing about, like, ah, he had a record of, I don't know, past, like, you know, just like you guys, he was, like, you know, mistreated and used for means he didn't intend, and, you know, something like that. And yeah, I, yeah. I don't, I feel like it's just, like, they literally, like, they look at some paperwork and they're like, See, he's actually family. And then yeah. they just like, toss it off and it's like and then we just But also away. now Han and Statham have to like talk to each other and he'd be like, dude, like you fucking blew me up. I didn't like, even think about this yet. You yeah. see how excited That's I am true. right now? They're gonna they're gonna fight in this movie. We're gonna well, get how, sure, how sure are we to take him back for this one? Han's the kind of guy that it's true, I don't know. He won't fight. He'll hash it out with him in a very real way, or yeah. he'll just be like cold as shit and just like Stay Eat it, like, you know, little that peanut was things. Bad. And he's like, remember that drink I gave you earlier? It had AIDS in it. And it's like, oh shit, I just killed <laughs> Just whatever it is. Yeah. Because I, I think that, know. I think that, because now that, like, we have a split off where, you know, the roid rage dispute between The Rock and uh, Vin Diesel is now branching off into Fast and Furious and Fast and Furious Presents. I feel it's like Statham's on that Fast and Furious Presents train now. I don't true. know if he'll be in nine. I, I'm wondering though if those paths are gonna immediately return to crossing. I would um, love it. I'm, I'm I curious. Love it. Yeah, they're gonna murder it. They've turned their back on family, but yeah. thematic resonance throughout the series points me to the concept that you never do that, even if they turn their back on you. So if, yeah, if I have to watch a Fast and Furious movie without The Rock doing something like I'm just gonna off the top of my head uh, flexing out of a cast or gun <laughs> uh, that was part of a drone and shooting an airplane out of the sky. I don't know if I can live in that world. We had, I think we talked about this on the show a million times, but we'll say it again since you're here. Uh, Garrett had me convinced for a while that during the wrench fight, that when they hit each other with wrenches, there was a very real chance that sparks would come off of their skin as they were just clubbing each other in the head. I God. swear and, to God, uh, there was... And in my I've... head, it feels like it's there, and it's not there, but yeah. if it was, it would be the correct choice. Well, we yeah. saw it in theaters, I swear, it was like... I just I have this distinct memory of a shot where Statham <laughs> straight up just smashes Diesel in the head with a wrench and sparks fly off of Diesel's head. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm made out of cars, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> my favorite fight scene 
my favorite lightsaber scene in Star Wars is in the Phantom Menace. Yeah. And I think that's one of the best lightsaber fight scenes ever. Yeah. The um, Darth Maul one this, at the end? Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. scene is 20,000 times better than that scene. <laughs> <laughs> it is exact. And again, I'll steal from Dan, but like, this was supposed to be like that moment where you're like, Vin Diesel, he never picks up a wrench because he killed a man with a wrench once. Yeah. But wait. Now he's learned his lesson, and guess what? He can kill with a wrench again. <laughs> again, he's back. Yeah. <laughs> so good. I also love that they literally try and fuck each other with their cars throughout that movie. Yeah. <laughs> and you, so my, my thing about Fate of the Furious, and I don't want to spend too much time talking about that because I feel like I'm... Yeah, they certainly didn't spend this. too much time writing it. <laughs> Fate, no, they didn't, because looking at it when I first saw it, I'm like, okay, now Luke Evans and Jason Statham are helping out the team. I haven't seen the other movies, but I've seen bad guys turn good all the time in film. Yeah. I can get there. But now that I like think back on that, putting all the pieces of f- four, five, six, and seven together, I'm like, that makes no fucking sense. Man. <laughs> like, okay, listen, man, I know you put me in a hospital bed and you blew up an airplane I was on, and like, you know, you really ruined my my chance at glory here with this big heist I had going. And you know, hey, it's me, Jason Statham. I know you almost killed my brother. Uh, you know, and he killed a bunch of other people on the way, and, you know, I just fucking hate you guys, but, oh, yeah, this one time saving your illegitimate yeah. child. But let, me, oh, fuck. <laughs> let, me, let me try and mold your mind really quick, because I, yes. I've long had a defense for this that the audience has heard a bunch of times, but, Dan, I have, like, a new addition to this defense I'm that I think it. is helpful. Because I've always uh, felt that the spirit of your argument is correct, because you're right, I just have to go with it. Like, yeah, so, can, can we call this defense the Shaw defense? Uh, yeah, sure. We'll call it the shot of us. I think that these movies are literally like a soap opera. That's what I like about them the most. And by soap opera rules, it's like this happens all the fucking time. Somebody yeah. dies? No. Within three episodes, they're either back or they have a twin or they have a clone. They're in a coma. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, people that were bad become good. People that were good become bad. It's like a constant just sort of flip flopping of I like it. It allows it to just have a constant high level of drama that is really fun. But they here's, keep resolving arcs without yes. really changing anybody. It's kind but of brilliant. Yeah. Here's my big new addition to this. And okay. if I'm right, I think it is exciting. Okay? So the trailer for Fast 9 promises that we're going to find out Toretto has a brother, I think. Right? I believe that's who John Cena is playing. It's Toretto's yes. brother. Right? Uh, I think what's going to happen... Another is, wrestler seeing how they're going to get along. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what I think is going to happen is this is eventually going to build to a finale that is basically Shaw's versus Toretto's. Yeah. There, we, we will have built out these two big crime families, basically, over the course of the series. And the series will get to culminate in these two families going to war with each other. And I think if that's where this lands, I'm really into the idea that the Shaw's have sort of kind of like snaked their way through all of this to the point where then we sort of set up like there are two clans here that eventually go to war together kind of does that make sense yeah, yeah. no honestly that would make it even more compelling because it's like okay we sort of started to understand one another and got along but at the end of the day we're not family right yes you know yes. We're not, uh, yeah. i always said i want that last one to be Papa Toretto shows up uh-huh. and it's played by either Stallone or Antonio Banderas uh-huh. and then he meets Mama Shaw they fall in love everybody's family officially on paper yep, there you go legally i love it <laughs> yeah they and then they find what makes it even better yeah the rock yeah. is there to be like the master of ceremonies for the wedding he like because garrett i think that you are correct i yeah. think that's where it's going and i yeah. think if it goes that way i can accept a little bit of the fluidity now but right? yeah. will you will you uh accept the idea that at this point if that's not where we're going if we just yeah. take it in a vacuum the turn to good the heel turn by yes. statham is uh underwritten compared to the rest of the heel turn a million series. percent it works okay. exclusively <laughs> as just like a fun plot tool you know what i mean yes. like yeah, yeah. not, not actually more of what we yeah. want so yeah. i'm in yeah. all i want is I more han and yes. them to cut Charlize Theron's white girl dreads off. Yes. All I care Which about. I believe the trailer promises. And give her something to do. She yes. would be such a yeah. Get her out of that goddamn air she castle. castle. Yeah. She never left the air castle. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, I, would like, oh, I would like Lucas Black to come back. Hmm. Yeah. The oh, I is think the trailer also promises later, that. He aged a lot. He did. Yeah. He aged so more than everybody. Is he in the trailer? He's. I he, think he is. I think he shows up in like the background of a shot in the trailer. I believe I'm correct about this. Uh, But yeah, also I think in seven, right? There's like a a really brief like he shows up in one of the montages. 
they do in seven, they tie back to the post credits of three. Right, and yeah. they build upon that scene, and they do it by keeping Vin Diesel in the shadows because he's puffier now because he's a little older. But they can't really oh keep God. Lucas in the in the shadows, and he looks considerably older. Like he's not a cool teen anymore. Right. He's he's dad. Was he ever? I, I've got I mean, a they, confirmation. That's what they went for. Yeah, yeah. I've got a confirmation via the official uh, Lucas Black IMDb page that he has a credit in F nine. Yes. Also, thought I saw him in that trailer. He got Your boy is back. Yeah. Are uh, are the two little guys the the buddies? Uh, I can't think of the one guy's a musician. Oh, uh, the Mexican dudes. Yeah, well, I don't think I, they're Mexican though. The buddies. Yeah, they're like <laughs> they're Dominican, like the I think. But yeah. I, in the montage yeah. where he's like, everybody in this room, there'll be nothing more important than this, and then they're never in any of the movies ever. Uh-huh. Yeah. The last time we saw them, they were at a casino in Monte Carlo, and he put all of his money on black, and then they cut the yeah. credits. Beautiful. Well, Tori, if you want more Han, you got to watch Better Luck Tomorrow. Oh, I yeah. It's a fast movie. Yeah. It's a good movie. And Han plays Han, and it's from Justin Lin. Mm-hmm. And it is Wait, like, in, is it in canon? It's not officially in canon, but it's not not in canon. Yeah. He has the same first and last name. It's the same actor. He's doing the same thing. He's always smoking. Mm. And if you quit smoking, a lot of people who quit smoking become orally fixated, which is why Han's always eating in the Fast and Furious things. There's a whole thing here. I'm going to get another beer. Bye. Yeah, go for it. Hold on. So if you want more Han, you're not going to get car races, but you will get uh, you will get more Han if you love him. If you do, better luck tomorrow. I'm I'm into it. He's the best character. He's so good. It's He's good so stuff. good. Yeah, I mean, I knew my dad was into it when I got a text that was just Han, and I was like, "Great, you're here." <laughs> you're like, Please tell me that this is good news, and that you're either talking about Star Wars or about Fast and Furious. Uh huh. Good news is Star Wars. Better news is Fast and the Furious. That's yeah, it's probably accurate. I'm gonna plug in my my plug headphones because my wireless ones are out of batteries. Give me a sec, guys. Tori, tell uh, us about the gonna... movie. Uh, let's see. Uh, did Garrett? talk because I, I know you guys have been doing these every other week about um the lure say that again the lure oh the with the mermaids yeah i liked that movie that was, it was merger. it's so crazy the lure like lure like l-u-r-e yeah, lure. L-U-R. yeah. yeah I, know. They I, was, I, make, I was making a 30 rock joke. Oh, okay it's 2016 or 2015 2015 got it is it? Is it? I think it's Polish. Polish, yes, I think that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Uh, very good horror and cool, like mythology, like fairy tale folklore stuff. It takes place like, and around, it's a musical. Yeah, it takes place yeah. like around a nightclub, and the musical scenes are incredible. amazing. The music, that's the, the other stuff fantastic. I've been listening to. Yeah, yeah so I've been good. I've the music like all week. Yeah. I feel like it's a. When I watched that movie, I just got strong Blondie vibes off of it. Yeah, oh, that's good. yeah. It's like so the good. lady that they work with yeah. was very much a, a Blondie riff to me. She was a oh, Debbie yeah. Harry. She's like an older sex kitten type. She's mm-hmm. Just, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I liked that movie. That you liked it more than I did. I it, I I loved the first like forty five minutes maybe, and I felt like the longer it went on, I was lo- I was losing something along the way yeah. somewhere. I wasn't. Mm. Uh, it lost steam for me as it went, I guess. It got more fo- folklore le- like heavy towards the end, which I'm really into. So yeah. I went with that. I, I liked that movie a lot. I, I felt very strongly about that. I, I liked I liked the direction it went because my favorite folklore is like gross, like old old fairy tales get like gross the way yeah. like the lighthouse is, and actually mm-hmm. a sister movie to the lighthouse because yeah. they are both movies that deal with the concept. That, yeah, you think mermaids are sexy, but remember, they have fish vaginas. And so <laughs> something that has always bugged me as someone who's sea creature phobic. But, um, yeah, I, I, what was that movie it's called? It's not Wild Tales. Tale of Tales, I think it's called. Yeah. It's like a super oh, gross yeah. movie with a lot. I watched it on a plane. I, I downloaded it. It wasn't one of those edited plane movies. Mm. So yeah. it was gross <laughs> as hell, but I love that whole... Uh, I, yeah, I love when fairy tales get like body horror y. Yeah, for sure. The lure really got me there. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so cool. I'm glad you like that. Yeah, it was great. Uh, Dan, I'm going to hit you with a couple of things really fast because I'm curious if you've seen any of this. So I'm going to give you three titles one, two, three. Ready? Have you seen When a Stranger Calls? Yes. Carol have... Kane, a forever yes. babe. Lover. Yes. Lover. Have you seen When a Stranger Calls Back? I have not. Whoa. Have you seen The Stepfather? Dude. With John Locke from Lost, fucking yeah. shit up. Oh, that movie rules, dude. It's so, so Steve, good. have you seen that? 
I saw the remake with that dude from Nip Tuck. Dylan. <laughs> dude, Dylan they were supposed to play the stepfather at uh, Mahoning Drive-In oh. last summer. Yeah. And I was there, and then they played the stepfather, and it was the remake. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, well, I've never seen this. I'll watch this shit. Yeah. And it gets like 10 minutes into it, and it does that like... And the loudspeaker goes over there like, well, looks like the studio sent us the wrong film. So uh, instead of watching that piece of shit, we're going to just move on to the next movie, Popcorn. Uh, <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, I want to uh, see Popcorn because the same yeah. girl. I think, yes. Yeah, yes. the same girl is in it. It's the girl that Popcorn is, all... is great. Yeah. <laughs> and I did the A-OK. I did not mean that. I should stop doing that. <laughs> I did not mean that in the, the white power way. Uh, uh, I'm doing metal horns in a cross. Yeah, yeah. Popcorn is so fucking yeah. good. Oh, yeah. cool. It's yeah. like legit good. Yeah. Um, dude, we I love the stepfather. I thought yeah. the stepfather was fucking awesome. Yeah, it's, like, it's immediately so crazy. Like mm-hmm. the opening scene is nuts. You see a murdered child within five yeah. minutes of the movie. Yeah, Jesus Christ! <laughs> yes. it's, it's like it's wild, and then it is just bonkers from there. There's like never a scene in that movie that is not like total heightened. Like we, Tori, like c- kind of oh, every c- performance is at eleven and a half. Yeah. Oh but, yeah. Like, yeah. It's so insane. But it all yeah. works. It's like it's so it, it like it. Like, I guess it is probably super campy, but it almost doesn't feel that way to me. Like, everything is, like, it really... It feels working. like a, uh, what's it called? Uh, not a Hallmark movie. Uh, like, a Lifetime movie. Yes, it that was what like that sort of yeah. to me. Yeah, she was like, it's like a Lifetime movie, but there's just, like, a lot of fucking actual murder in it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's actually good, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, like, actual gore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but my mom won't watch this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah she difference. won't like yeah. it. I love yeah. it, man. I thought it was so... And Terry O'Quinn is awesome in that movie. He's I'm looking at it. I'm looking at a thumbnail for the trailer right now, and Terry O'Quinn looks like uh, a CGI younger version of himself. Because <laughs> that's, that's the era that we live in now, where I don't believe he's ever been that young. I, it's yeah. I gotta be fake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, and the movie starts, and he has like a full bushy beard, and you're like, "Who the him. fuck are you?" Yeah. Yeah. I so forgot I mean, about that. I, you're right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, There's a whole other actor like... that I'll watch do anything. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. he's real good. Well, Remember that not, scene in Lost when he's like, Jack, you can't be sure where your dad is when he was just a stranger at the airport and he like made him feel peaceful about losing the body. I was like, feel me, bro. I, I absolutely, <laughs> I, I, might, I might do another rewatch. I absolutely love that show. I've never yeah. seen Lost. I've never seen it. And I think oh, that's Tori, like you'd love it. Opportunity for me yeah. to rewatch it. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. It's, re- it's really fun. Yeah. Uh, so, Garrett, what were the other two? It was The Stepfather. Uh, when a stranger calls, which when, was oh good. Yeah, when a stranger calls I, back. You know what the best thing about when a stranger calls was, is that I thought the I thought the whole movie was what just the first twenty minutes of the movie are. Yeah, so yeah. So like yeah. after the oh, first, yeah, the calls coming from inside the house. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, that, I was like, that's got to be the finale of the movie. You know what I mean? And that's like twenty minutes into the movie. So like, it was a very different movie than I thought it would be. Um, mm-hmm. And and I liked it. I thought it was good. I think the opening and the closing of the movie are like great. The middle is like a little bit meandering and and is okay. That's like a perfect casting movie though too. Yeah, like Carol like Kane's pretty like perfect for that role. Steve, it literally it is definitely a huge influence on Scream. Like that actually is the movie yeah. it reminded me of most. The even yeah. even down to like the score is very much I think what they oh, wow. were trying to emulate mm-hmm. in in Scream. Yeah. Um, it's it's like a very similar. But so Dan, that was the thing. So we watched When a Stranger Calls Back, which is the same writer and director. Is a direct sequel to that movie that also 14 stars. Fourteen years later. Yeah, like fifteen Whoa. years. Whoa. That also stars Carol Kane. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, uh, what's the guy's name that plays the cop? Uh, hold on. But yeah, both I, of them are in it together. I'm gonna find it. I got it right here. Uh, cause you know him from some stuff. He's like in a bunch of stuff. Oh, is it Charles Durning? Yes. Yeah. Charles Durning of Dog Day Afternoon fame, Oh Brother Where Art Thou, Tootsie. Oh Brother Art Thou, yeah. He's like the, the Muppet uh, movie. Yeah, he's in tons of stuff. Hell yeah. So they both return to some Muppets. Movie, and it is, so it's great, actually. It's like a made-for-TV, but it's like made for Showtime, I think. So it's Oh, like there because so... there are boobs at the end. Yeah. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah. it's that kind of made-for-TV movie. Yeah. <laughs> Cinemax is TV. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, you know, but it's got, like, the, the boxy, like, framing and stuff. Yeah, know? yeah. But anyway, it is really well directed. Like, you can tell this director is, like, it's 15 years later. He's, like, a better director, you know. The the first half of the movie is, like, almost not a horror movie. It's, mm-hmm. like, it's very much, like, takes the trauma that these people have experienced, like, very seriously. And that's, like, a lot of what the movie is about. And I was, I started to get, like, wow, this is, like, 
uh, you know, I was like a little bit disappointed. It wasn't like a, a horror movie necessarily, but I was like, this is like pretty good. And then in the then in the second half of the movie, it goes way into overdrive <laughs> on being like a totally wild horror. It's it becomes insane. like a crazy slasher that has a premise you could not see coming. <laughs> Uh, I, I was I'd never seen it. I, I watched the original. Actually, I remember watching the original on like Channel Forty Eight WGTW, sure. yeah. and I was I remember watching it and midway through realizing that the whole call is coming from inside the house. My only reference point for that was the old Bud Ice commercials with the penguin that sang Doobie Doobie Doo. Sure. One of them, the penguin called from inside the house, and when I'm watching, when I was watching that movie when I was maybe twelve. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> where Bud Ice got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, so anyway, my opinion is that sequel is much better than the original movie, I think. Uh, I want to hunt it down. Yeah, and it's, on so Prime. it's on Prime. So oh, right on. Is the original on Prime? I'd like to revisit it's that. It's on... Oh, right. Where do we find it? I think we found it on, like, Showtime, maybe. It's oh, floating around somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but I don't it. think it's on Prime. Yeah. Um, I'm but, happy uh, to dude, buy it. Or that sequel it. is really worth watching, I think. And frankly, it's one of the ones where, like, I started asking people about it. I don't... I don't think it even has necessarily. I'm sure it's a cult movie to, in some regard. Yeah, but I, a tiny cult. It's, yeah, I don't even think it's necessarily one that. Yeah. Gets, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, there's like circulated a lot. There's a scene that I've seen a lot of pictures like posted yeah. from like okay. like the horror community kind of yeah. that I assumed was a dream sequence because of how fucking bonkers it looks. And <laughs> cool. It's not a dream sequence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm into it. I might I'm be so... overselling how weird it is, but it is like it just is admirably bizarre, especially <laughs> yeah. for how like serious the beginning of the movie. And the is. end of it kind of feels like an X Files episode, yeah. weirdly too. It's yeah. so strange. Sold. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm yeah. adding it to my. Yeah. I have a giant list in my phone of just every movie I've heard of that I want to see. Yeah. 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 So I'm adding that as well Don't as the sequel there. Anything other than a cult movie, but it's like a really fine. ungood cult yeah. movie. Like I was it's like, it's got to be better than the Simon West made remake. Yeah, I w- I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, am I curious about that? I don't know. It's like I didn't even necessarily love the first one. So yeah, yeah. I saw that one because I worked at the movie theater when it was released, and it's passable. Definitely yeah, it's don't whatever. Don't it's like about just it. teen horror. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can miss it. Yeah. Well, no I'll tell you I about something. About randomly. Sorry, oh yeah. Guys. No, please. You you uh, go. I thought of- I thought about this movie randomly seeing it as a kid. And Tori, when you brought up the fact that there's randomly boobs in that, in the, in the, who, who, uh, when a stranger calls again or whatever. Yeah. I, this is the very first movie that I was like, oh my God, there's boobs in this movie. Like as a kid. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I shouldn't be watching this. And it is, I'm going to tell you who the, the writers are. They're the Wachowski twins. Oh, is it Bound? And the director is Richard Donner. Richard Donner. It stars Julianne Moore, Antonio Banderas, and Sylvester Stallone. Is this Assassins? It's Assassins. Yes! (laughs) Once you called Stallone in, which actually gives me a perfect uh, connection point to a movie that I watched for the first time this week. I was uh, feeling pretty down. I was like, I need to put on something mindless. So I put on Cliffhanger. Oh, a movie that I had never yeah. seen. Uh, not only did I retroactively suddenly get the opening sequence of Ace Ventura when nature calls uh-huh. um, right. because of the whole raccoon thing, but that movie is insane. Who it's, uh, it's Rennie Harlan, right. which okay, yesterday I, I watched oh. that. Uh, well, over the last couple of days, I watched that Never Sleep Again documentary because I was yeah. waiting for Scream Queen, which I hope to watch this weekend. Um, but I watched that, and Renny Harlan gets a lot of FaceTime because I believe he did the fourth or fifth uh, okay. Freddy movie. Mm-hmm. And him yes, talking about no, movies, course. especially talking about putting breasts in movies, is really funny. Yeah, yeah. And he's just like, and I'm telling the actress, like, no, no, you have to keep it off because no, I, I know this is what the teenage boys want to see. Yeah, like, yeah. He's just very much that guy. But you can tell he's not, like, pervy. He's just very much like, I'm going to sell this movie to anybody I can. And if it takes boobs, I will. Yeah. And he, he's the one who came up with the, uh, like, the dog pee resurrects Freddy. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. and I'm thinking about uh-huh. it. It's, it's dogs of hell. It just makes so much sense. It's beautiful. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, no, it doesn't. I'm pretty, he's like, it's, think... it's, it's everything coming. The dog pees. Freddy's back. I mean, you have to love it. That's amazing. I think I'm right so about good. this. 
You know that scene in Tropic Thunder where they're all just like walking up over the hills and stuff? It's like part of a montage. I yeah. think in the director's cut, I'm pretty sure this is the line. Jay Baruchel at one point is just babbling on about like the Blu ray versus like HD DVD <laughs> thing or whatever. I know what you're talking and about. At yeah. some point, he goes, like, Rennie Harlan is a very underrated director. Have you seen Cliffhanger? Cliffhanger <laughs> is a very good movie. Dude, he's 100% right. Cliffhanger, you want to talk about like stunts in movies? Yeah. There is yeah, some ace stunts in these movies. Just yeah. absolutely fantastic. Uh, so much skydiving. Uh, there's skiing. There's a scene where Stallone and a dude are sliding down a mountain, and as they're sliding down the snow, they're beating the hell out of each other as they race towards a cliff. And like, so he's like hitting the axe, trying to get traction. But the bad guy is John Lithgow doing just a vaguely oh. European accent. Uh, <laughs> Michael Rooker is the other star. Oh yeah. hell it's yeah! Absolutely bananas. Yeah. And it's just Stallone at his like like part of the the thing is they leave him stranded on the mountain uh, without his jacket. No problem, because he's got the guns, and they're always on display as he's in his tank top. But it's fucking gory. It's funny. There's so many, like, good one-liners. Yeah, yeah. It's just nonstop entertainment. I, Cliffhanger is, is just fantastic. It's unbelievable. I, I loved everything about, about Cliffhanger. you got to watch it. I'll watch that. That sounds great. Yeah. Sounds up our alley. And I, I can see Randy Harlan just being like... We need the plane bigger because it blows up. And then when it blows up, all of the people, they're 15, they go, wow. And then they see it again. That's, that's two tickets. That's two tickets. And they, it's, tickets. it's huge. They go, they blew up a plane. They don't know it's a model. Don't put this in the DVD. Like it's, yeah, it's, and, and oh, the model works fantastic. Uh, Just sounds nonstop high. And, and the excuses to put people into high flying stunts are paper thin. <laughs> it's just like you know the only way through this is if i dive off this mountain you know like it's yeah, it's yeah. you know oh well why can we use a pencil we have all these bombs yeah. <laughs> it's just like he's that like, kind of thing he's standing next to like skis a snowboard a snowmobile a sled he's like the only way down is for me to jump off of this cliff <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's but it's it's just violent and cruel and mean-spirited it's yeah. very much an artifact of the 1990s and if you're a big Stallone fan like I am, it is just essential. It, it was such fun. Do you think, speaking of stunts, do you think that the um, the people in charge of ensuring features at Paramount Pictures just like have like very very small heart attacks every time they film a Mission Impossible movie? Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure that they have somehow, like, there's, like, an illegal insurance policy that they've invented that covers Tom Cruise. Some, you well, know Tom what I mean? Cruise went to law school and then learned how to write oh, the yeah. most airtight insurance thing yeah. and hand-wrote it himself yeah. uh, using a uh, hammer and chisel into that stone slab, yeah. which he also learned. Right. There's, a, there's one real quick thing I want to talk, because Dan said uh, John Lefkoe does, like, the worst European accent. Yeah. I stumbled Not upon it. Nondescript. He's just <laughs> European. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's what I'm doing when I do Rennie Harlan. He's doing yes. that, yeah. where it's like I Rennie Harlan. I think's from Finland. I, would say I don't Rennie know Harlan's what that sounds like. Though. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty descriptive, but it's ambiguous enough to say you don't know where I'm from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's an interview that I saw with Matt Damon recently, <laughs> where he's talking about when he the very first day on the set of Rounders, where he had to work with John Malkovich. And John Malkovich in that movie has like the just absolutely most horrendous Russian accent. Yeah. Really? And the very the very first scene that they started filming, and Malkovich just busted out this fucking just dog shit Russian accent. Matt, Matt Damon just started laughing. He's like, he's like, what are you doing? And Malkovich is like, I'm acting. <laughs> <laughs> when you're an actor, you can just act, and people won't question you. Yeah. Matt Damon was like, kind of right. I got, He's like, you know what? I took that advice. I took it to heart. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Oh, that's very funny. Uh, yeah, I can just good. picture him be like, yes, I'm from Russia. Yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. from Russia? I'm. My last name, Malkovich, is Russian for villain. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's what I am. Well, because at that point, Dane only was me still and like... Peter Sarsgaard talk this way. <laughs> it's pretty good. At that point, Dane was still off Goodwill Hunting, but he was still trying to make a name for himself, for sure. Yeah. Malkovich was fucking Malkovich, you know? Yeah. So he's like, Malkovich pretty much like ran the set, is what Damon said, and that makes sense because it's, it's, it's still a great cult movie. As a poker player, I love it. I've never actually seen it. It's been recommended to me for years. I would love to see that. I'll just look up any clip of Malkovich in it, and you'll just start laughing your ass off about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even do an impersonation because 
I might do accidentally do a good Russian accent. Can you just do it anyway? I I couldn't. I couldn't even. I can't, Way to ruin I can't. the show. Way to Sorry, ruin man. the show. Yeah, man. There's no good. That's the end of the bit, and that's the end of the podcast. Good that's night, fair. Guys. <laughs> that's that's the thing. This is actually the end of the podcast. So you really have just let this collapse. You you brought us in on such a high note. Uh, are we actually yeah. coming up to the end? Where are we, we are. done? We, we are. I'm just yeah, but I'm I'm just messing with Steve. I'm using that to. to Does anyone to, else have anything I'm they not, want I'm to not recommend? Gonna cry when it's sober or anything. <laughs> I got I got two recommendations in yeah, there. Do Does it. anyone want to want to try and drop something else? Uh, I got a, I got a recommendation that I didn't want to talk about because we talked about it on our side project which is still a secret, but it, you'll see it soon. No, um, I, that covers it. Uh, I did watch Night right? of the Hunter, Gary. We're going to have some fun with that in the future. Oh, yes. I'm very excited to talk about that. And, of course, I Night revisited The Vast of Night, which everyone knows oh, I love. So yeah. good. That's the right reaction to that movie is, oh. <laughs> it really is the best it's way. so good. <laughs> so good. What do you got for us, Steve? What was the... Uh... And Cross Concrete. What is Yo. it? Oh, dragged, dragged across, across concrete. concrete. Oh, yes. Can't stop thinking, like, maybe a week and a half removed from the movie, can't stop fucking thinking about it, man. Yeah. I had that experience with it, too. And Dan, I, I was, like, again, I was live tweeting Dan my experience watching it, and he was like, you gotta watch Bone Tomahawk next. And I said, no, because he and my other friend de- described in detail what happens uh, at the climax. And the I'm scene. not about to watch a dude split, get split in half uh, from the balls to the sky. Oh, right but, but Matthew dude. Fox is in it. Yeah. Yes. I know, but doesn't he, isn't he the one that gets cut? No. He's, nah. well, the movie's like two and a half hours long. He's not the one that gets cut. Yeah. And for the first like hour, 45 minutes, it's just nonstop Matthew Fox like really chewing scenery in a way that I, until that point, did not know he was capable of. He's great. And that's where I was like, oh, he's, act- he's not just a TV guy. This guy's yeah. a star. Speed Racer just put the cherry on top. But <laughs> Bone, Bone Tomahawk <laughs> is the Sunday, man. That is like where it's at. Yeah. I'll check it out. Because I, I did, now I did it. I did it. Yeah, it's a double feature with Brawl and Cellblock 99 and Drag Across Concrete. Oh, wow. That's a yeah. double feature. Did yeah. you break a window as soon as that was done just because you felt mad and misanthropic? No, I, I just fucking sat. I'm not kidding you. I sat in the darkness and I'm what the fuck did I just do to myself? I'm so, <laughs> I'm like so emotionally distraught right now. I just got to go to bed. <laughs> so I, just, uh-huh. I did that exactly that. Which I just went to bed movies? and had nightmares. Which one of those movies did you like better? Drag Across Concrete, for sure. Okay. I, I like Brawl. Definitely, it, the length definitely brings it down a few points, but the more I think about it, there it's like such a tight story that yeah, you know, once you it starts out, you know, all the threads are out here, and then it all comes together at the end. Yeah. And in this first quadrant, it's a little bit kind of hard to keep up with, and then all of a sudden, what's that? What's who's Deb from Dexter again? Uh, Jennifer Carpenter. Yeah, from Dexter. Jennifer Carpenter's like quick ten minute story arc is the most heartbreaking fucking thing I've ever yeah. seen in my entire. I, I know, I know. It's like so crushing. Yeah. That 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 writer loves uh, S. Craig Zoller. He's really good at like doing rug pulls that yeah. are essentially for just the sake of like fucking you up, yeah. but are so well motivated through character that like you can't fault him for it. Yeah, it's yeah. a really weird house of cards to build. I and, agree with you. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I really dig that shit. It's, yeah. Yeah. I'm into it. Because that runs that line that like um, Hereditary ran where like I didn't like Hereditary because it was like so abusive to those characters. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it, I feel like Zoller is on that same exact line. But you're right. Like there's something about, I don't know, it feels natural to those stories that those things would happen or something. You know what I mean? It is a, a really good subtle way of showing characters that are good have an evil side and the characters that are evil kind of have a more noble side and like the partnership of Vince Vaughn and um, Mel Gibson is like the quintessential factor of that because Vince Vaughn in that movie is uh, overall a good a good dude he didn't commit the act of brutality but he didn't say anything about it so he still got God for it and put him in the position that he was in meanwhile Mel Gibson did commit the crime brought Vince Vaughn along kind of like against his will almost, but like manipulated. Yeah, he used him as padding. And then even at the end, he there's a little bit of nobility in the sense of like, all right, let's I'm gonna work together with this guy, just make sure I cover my own ass because I don't trust anybody. That kind of thing. So like you see these like really nuanced 
flickers of, you know, the opposite of what you thought they were. And it's, the dude is just fucking talented. I think what I liked about that movie is like, you know, I'm a police skeptic. <laughs> That's kind of been shot into overdrive <laughs> yeah, in recent yeah. times, yeah. but always have yeah. been. But I like, one of the things I liked about Dragged Across Concrete is that it, without using flashbacks, it gave me enough of a window as to who these men were before they were corrupted by the system. And that is a really difficult thing to do without using flashbacks or like voiceover or anything like that. Or and it's just in the texture of the script. That's really smart writing. Yeah. Um, I think before we like totally wrap kind of on that note, just because, uh, you know, I feel like that he's like kind of a a director that's like a little bit controversial and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and especially since like, you know, that we're in kind of a crisis right now and in, in our country that we should probably use like some what of the... Mean? the privilege that we have as, you know, white people who have a platform to just like yeah. mention that there's also like tons of interesting stuff on streaming that you can watch to educate yourself on yeah. like some oh, of the yes. racial issues going on. A um, lot of streamers are doing yeah. free uh, select programming. Criterion yeah. has an awesome program. Yeah. Um, Horror Noir is free on Shudder. Amazing. There's a, yeah. There's a lot of great things that are, that are doing that um, just so you can go in. I believe 13th. I just, I just watched Thir- Thir- Yeah. I just watched 13th. Yep. Yeah. So oh, good. dude, that movie is a lot of shit. I would honest with you, a lot of shit I was not privy to before I watched that yeah. movie. Yeah, I thought I knew a lot of homework. shit, and I did not. They should show that in schools because that was one where I they came need, out of they it. They need to show that in schools starting this like now. Yeah. And credit <laughs> to uh, Duvernay, that's like a movie that watches. It's a movie mm-hmm. that got me to the right emotional level, of feeling devastated by it. But mm-hmm. I never felt like it was punishing to watch. It felt like a really instructive thing. Yeah, yeah. that's a great sure. book. Yeah, I also you know it was a, a genius. Sorry, one more thing. You know, a genius part of thirteen that I thought, and I, I'm a graphic designer, so like this really was such a great mechanism of using typography. Is every time anybody, black or white, said the word criminal, it flashed on the screen as big, large type. Oh wow, oh, interesting. I was on the screen probably about fifty to sixty times in the uh, in the entire movie. So let's give you just an example of like just how you know, everyone is talking about, you know, people of color. Like, that's not a good thing. And, like, it, yeah. it, it shines a light on it in such a good and creative way. Yeah, It, like, like, dissolves the idea that we have, especially in the justice system, where we go, just look at him. You yeah. know everything about him, just look yeah. at him. Yeah. And, like, that's how we treat criminals and ex-cons and things like that. Yeah. And it's, like, upsetting that we can go, just look at him, and that's valid. And I yeah. think that sort of serves to subvert that. Yeah, that, that that movie definitely made me tear up on multiple occasions. Yeah. That's a um, great I think flick. I think they also made available. I forget what streaming service, but um, a documentary called "I Am Not Your Negro" that um, talks about Malcolm X and um, Martin Luther King dying, but it also is from the perspective of James Baldwin, who as is read by Sam Jackson is read by Sam Jackson. Yes, and like it has a lot of clips of Baldwin talking about race and protests in America, and he's probably one of the most eloquent speakers I've ever heard in my life. So if you've never listened to James Baldwin talk, you should definitely watch that documentary because it's very, very good. That's a fantastic movie. Yeah, absolutely. I, just, I was kind of unfamiliar with James Baldwin, minutes. which is says something about the schools i was very unfamiliar yeah. with james baldwin yeah. until i saw that and that led me to read more but the fact that even like sam jackson we expect him to read in a sam jackson way know. he doesn't no. he reads it like scholarly and clean but it's still sam jackson it that's a cool movie yeah it's very good and i think it's like 80 minutes it's like real short yeah so it's, like, it's real like, yeah, oh, yeah 80 baldwin minutes of your time like, yeah so good that dude's a wordsmith man it's incredible. Yeah. Um, and there's, yeah, like the horror noir is available, obviously, but there's also just like tons of cool, like yeah. uh, directors who are people of color who have stuff that's free on streaming. Shudder has like a collection of like mm-hmm. movies by black yeah. directors. So Canopy has a section to it. Canopy is always free. Yeah. If you have a library card, highly recommend. Very cool. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff out there that you can support. And... Just Mercy is next. You know, yeah. 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 Just Mercy is great. It's, it's great. It's free right. It's free right now on Prime. Dude, yeah. that is. It is. I mean, Jamie Foxx is a tremendous actor. Michael B. Jordan is the tremendous actor, so and it's good. a true story. There's there's a portion of that movie because it's about a, a lawyer doing pro bono representation yeah. for death row inmates, and uh, there's a there's a like a five to ten minute segment of that movie that is so beautifully done, and it will just rip your heart out. It is, 
it's horrifying. Yeah. And it has this performance from an older actor. I'm not going to get his name off the top of my head. That will break your heart. But that movie's fantastic. Same uh, writer director as Short Term Twelve. So oh, I love Short Term. Someone who can really handle yeah. drama in a way that's yeah just well done. That that cool. movie's fantastic. I also, and this is just this is not a movie, but I started on Tori's point. Um, I ordered a book a long time ago that I never read, and now I feel really guilty about it. But it, it's called White Fragility. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And why uh, white people are you know uncomfortable talking about race? Because I am. I straight up am. In fact, and... I think you should stop talking about it now. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable like, now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> but no, I started reading it, and like even like the first like you know 30 pages, I'm like, God damn it, everything sucks, man. And I never knew it, and I feel so guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's hard. That's what that's what this week <laughs> is about. Yeah. I think yeah. everybody's doing sure. a lot of learning and listening, and I hope to do more of both. Yeah, at the bookshop I work at, people keep trying to order all of these books about being anti-racist, and we are back-ordered on That's this awesome. Stuff, yeah. Which is, yeah. in a way, cool, yeah, because, like, tons of people are looking for this material right now, yeah. so. That's cool. Yeah. And also, that's really cool for the bookstore with the double dose of protests and quarantine. I mean, bookstores yeah. are fighting an up to uphill battle to begin with. Yeah. For yeah. sure. So it's like, oh, right on. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, Tori Very works nice. at a novel idea, mm-hmm. uh, which is in Philadelphia. And yeah. Can, uh, Probably find so them fun. That's, just a, that's yeah. just a great fun. Yeah. That's a great name. Yeah, yeah it's so um, good. I was going to say, I think Sorry to Bother You is on Hulu now as well. Ooh, Dude, yeah. it is. I keep yeah. thinking about that movie so much. Yeah. That made it into my top 15 of that year. And that's yeah. one of those movies like Under the Skin where in subsequent years I was like, <laughs> oh shit, this is actually much. Yep. Like that should have been in my top five, if not in my top three. That is like. Totally agree. Sorry to bother you. I think about all the time. Yeah, me too. And not just on the level of like certain things tie into it, you know, uh, just in the news and stuff, but in terms of like, that's a really, really interesting and unique satire that yes. you don't often yeah. see. And it's just so well done and so weird and strange. And man, yep. that movie is so good. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't and, seen it, but I saw that clip where the guys, the guys are going back for the, I hope you have a really great day, man. Yeah, you know what? I hope your month is really great. No, yeah, man, I hope that you, I hope that you're you, I hope that you're blessed for the rest of your life. It's like that scene. I, I, Steve, like, I, just, I stumbled upon that clip. Put it's that amazing. on tonight, man. It's, you yeah, would right. love that movie. Yeah. It's very funny. It like sneaks its lessons under, and then it also like it, it's a movie that gets weird in a way that definitely don't read anything about it. It gets yeah. weird in a big, strange way, and it's one that you're like, this is this might have jumped the shark. And then, like, a week later, you're thinking about it. You're like, that's the only way they could have told this story. <laughs> it's, it's so good, dude. Oh, I, man, Boots is Riley is like, dude, And he's a great Twitter follower right now. I was going to say that, yeah. The Boots director, Riley is, like, he's is the dude. Like, amazing on Twitter. Is Tessa yeah. in that movie? What's up? Is Tessa in that movie? Tessa yeah, yeah. Oh, and she's great in it. She has a great I earring collection Tessa. in the movie. Oh, I man. This. I want her it's earrings so, so bad. They're so They're cool. They're all so cool. Yeah. She was the only Some part of Westworld 3 that I was interested in. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, interesting. Yeah, there was very Actually, little Aaron, about Aaron Paul. Aaron Paul played Jesse in Westworld, which yeah. I'm okay with, but like Tessa Thompson carried that series on her back. This oh, cool. Like, what are you doing, Batch? Are you a robot that has human emotions, Batch? <laughs> Mr. White, these robots are alive. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, she knows karate, Batch. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. We gotta wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. We right. do have to wrap this yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm at the bottom of this thing, so I'm feeling loopy. That's fine. No, that's perfect. I, I, uh, why don't we wrap it up by, you know, um, personally, donate to your local bail funds wherever you are. Wherever yeah. You are, just yeah. Donate to your local bail funds. Um, Black Lives Matter. Um, pay attention. Listen. Do what you can. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and we four white people are here to tell you what's up. <laughs> No, I mean, I what think is good. up is that Black Lives Matter. I think it's good for us to add our voices to the. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. no, I, I agree. I'm just. Yeah. Mad. Yeah. Um, but um, you can find me on. Now I'm going to plug myself. This is like the most ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, we were going to plug ourselves anyway. I know, let but me, no, me... I think you're right. There's a lot of like, there, there's a lot of change going on right now, and yeah. it's really ugly and violent, and we're just getting a window into the reality of other people's normal life, and mm-hmm. it's been an eye opener, and so you know. Everyone just be helpful. And I'll speak for myself and say that like what I thought I was doing was good enough and now that I now I know that it is not. And I like most people I know, I hope that we can all pledge to do better. I, yep. I agree There's a you. lot of great places to donate to. Um I think the rough cut t shirts thing is still happening. Yeah. Yes. So you can get your sweet sweetbacks badass song. 
uh, T-shirt that everything goes to. I think they're diversifying their donations yeah, now because it was so well supported. Yeah. That's yeah. great. So really cool stuff. Uh, Cinema seventy six is also running a fundraiser yes. right now. Um, so yeah, just if you got something, donate. If you don't got something, you know, use your voice. It's yeah. seek out, stuff. seek out black owned businesses and patronize those. Yep. You know, yeah. make sure that everyone yep. bring your bring your crew when things open up again. Bring your crew to brunch at a, at a black owned restaurant. Yeah. And there are resources for that stuff everywhere right now. Yeah. You can, yeah. You, you can Google that and you'll find a list in your local area. Yeah. Literally, I can't open my eyes without seeing them. So you can find yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is great. Um, all right. So now let's do that capitalist thing and uh, plug ourselves. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter and, and It's socialist if everyone, if everyone shares it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So yeah. Let's go that way. <laughs> um, I'm here for, want... per, for perspective. Yeah, yeah. Put the I'm drink right. down, Dan. <laughs> I'm no, on, it's just a lighter. Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter. Jack Letterbox White lighter. At uh, Philadelphia. That's with an F. Uh, you can find the show at I Like Two Movies, Samara Two, on Twitter, Facebook, all over the internet. Google us and uh, subscribe, rate on iTunes, especially. That's uh, very helpful to us. And uh, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, at Dan Scully. Oh, yes. At Dan Scully on all the things Letterbox, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Cinema76.com. Findy.com. Um, Cinema 76 is about to launch. Uh, we did our summer blockbusters uh, last summer. And so now we are doing box office bombs where we'll be defending the ones that we love. It's a really exciting project. Very I'm exciting. finally going to get to write about Southline Tales. So I get to write about Speed Racer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. You're doing Speed Racer. Yeah. So it's going to be fantastic. Uh, my better half, Jen, is doing Shoot 'em Up. That's going to be wild. I yeah. can't so, wait to read it. <laughs> oh, right on. Right on. Yeah. I, yeah it's going to be a lot of fun. So definitely check that out. And uh, I think that's all I want to plug. Steve, should I plug Hot Property? Stay tuned. There's a new podcast coming called uh, Hot Property. That's, that's it. <laughs> we'll let you know. Um, I'm Steven Richards. I'm a graphic designer of both I Like the Movie Movie and Cinema 76. Yeah. I haven't written anything for Cinema 76. Nobody ever invited me to. You can oh, dude, follow you can. my dog. No, it's fine. I'm not mad about it. You can follow <laughs> my dog at BB8 underscore the Corgi. Um, other than that, just um, leave me alone. <laughs> Dude, you want to write something? You totally should. Yeah, that's fine. We'll take it. I, that's like that's cool. I'm, I'm gonna like follow your corgi though. I think yeah. that sounds great. Yeah, I do it. Yeah, She's great. <laughs> and she, you know what? Gotta, I'm gonna give her a round of applause real quick. She behaved the entire podcast on that part. Oh, so. BB. For her. Uh, I'm Tori Potenza. I write for Cinema 76 as well. And I have a podcast called Butter With That with some of my friends. Um, we are kind of trying to figure out what sort of stuff we want to post right now with everything going on. Um, but I think our goal is to at least repost our Fruitvale Station episode that we did a while back. Um, so check that out. That'll be up Friday or today or tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. It'll be up. Yo, watch It'll be Fruitvale up. Station yeah. if you haven't. Fruitvale Station might be the movie to watch right now. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's some good shit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. My yeah. name is Gareth Smith. I like to movie movie. My name is Dan Scully, and I like to movie movie. I'm Tori Patel. <laughs> God damn it. Damn it. Let's do it at the same time. Yeah. Right. Same. One, two, I'm Tori Patel. My name is Tori Patel. I like to movie movie. I like to movie movie. Phone no, Tomahawk. You like to movie movie because we, we like, like to, to movie. movie. Phone Tomahawk. Fun time, Mark. Is it? What? Is, is Did he hang up? I don't know. It's frozen on Garrett and Tori, and you're both making funny faces. <laughs> I hope it's not frozen, because, Steve, I want you to show them your cool painting in the background. Oh, yeah. I adore well, that. How do I see who's on the call? Um, I don't know. Skype is... <laughs> I think it's just, it takes a minute to save because it was recording. Uh, this uh, is yeah. so funny. We're still free on the call. This is wild. Oh, 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 oh. It's funny because Garrett's face is like very menacing right now. It's menacing, right. and Tori's looks like she's amused by the menacingness of it. I wonder if we have the same, the same uh, freeze frame. Oh, 